Welcome to Made It with Connor Tomke. Last time I was talking to you, so this is Benji Markoff, and he's fantastic. I think you were episode three, episode four. I painfully listened to part of, of uh, our podcast last time. It's very hard to listen to yourself. It's very hard to watch yourself, but there's uh, two things that stood out whenever I was watching your podcast, and yes. one is I said uh, shits instead of schwitz in the very like first five <laughs> seconds of it, and uh, the schwitz is a new podcast where you interview people inside a sauna that's yes. inside your backyard. And um, you've done a few episodes since then. So you said it's a were... private podcast. No one has access to it other, other than me at this point. Um, <laughs> you said I'm people are dying. It... <laughs> like people yeah, are dropping. Um, yeah, people are, are struggling in the 200 degree heat. Um, Do you think you're going to drop the of, temperature it's... or drop the time? Or are you just going to be like, you got to be tough to be in the Schwitz? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's more so finding people that are uh, can tough it out. Is it business content N- or is it life content? It's life content. We don't know like, what's going to be it. I think I, I never know within each episode what we're going to talk about. Part of the problem is sometimes when you're sweating bullets and you're kind of delirious and it's minute 15, you, I just start asking weird questions. And so some of those questions are business related. Some of those questions are completely nonsensical. You don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. And that's the interesting kind of part of the 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 journey of what I want why I wanted to do it right because I'm like it's you know for me I'm overexposed to so much like business content all the time like very specific like entrepreneurial related business content um and like I live that day to day right I think that you know my one of the reasons why I haven't even like published all the, uh, any of the content yet is like i'm just learning myself from the conversations i'm having with people that's kind of why i'm doing it in the first place um it's just a vehicle to get weird and have weird conversations and see what comes out of it and usually there's like a few nuggets from that that i'm like oh, i never thought about you know do you think it would have come out if you guys were not in the sauna together no, definitely not. It's because of the sauna, hundred percent. I feel like it might be similar to if uh, someone started a podcast in like a ayahuasca retreat. <laughs> <laughs> There's like two different things I pronunciated wrong in the first podcast. So the first was the schwitz, not the shits. Uh, the second is I said paddle, not padel. Well, and... there's a big debate on whether it's, it's called paddle or padel. Oh, it's I, a debate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're not in the wrong by saying paddle. Oh, okay. So, Cool. Um, globally, like internationally, it's called paddle. Okay. Um, and so part- I was international. Yes, exactly. You're just a more well-traveled man, you know? Yeah, that's, um, that's what that is. And, um, in the U S some people call it paddle, some people call it paddle in the Northeast. It's confusing to say paddle because there's already a sport called paddle tennis. On top of that, I just think paddle sounds cooler. It does sound cool. It sounds more foreign. When you said it. That way, I was instantly intrigued. Yeah, exactly. It's like uh, Target versus Target, <laughs> but <laughs> that uh, so w- less douchey, maybe. I don't know. It's. I also like with the our brand is Padel United Sports Club, and I think just the alliteration of that, or you know, the way that sounds coming off the tongue, it sounds nicer to me, like in my own head, than Paddle United Sports Club. Uh, but you know, the public can decide. They I can call whatever they, as long as they show up, they can call whatever they want. I'm not sure if my phone was listening when I was talking to you, yeah. but ever since I got like a lot of TikTok content on oh, Padel, Padel yeah. and I've been getting like I'm I'm relatively hooked. And there's also something in Brooklyn, like yeah, Paddle new, House. Yeah, have yeah. you been? I have. I'm actually gonna head over there after this, anyways. That looks amazing. Yeah, it's um they are they're the fir- they were the first ones to open up uh in the Northeast. How long does it take to play a game? A match. Usually people book for 90 minute sessions. 90 minute sessions. Okay. I'm trying um, to see if uh, you can book there's for an hour. window for me to like get in there and, and like learn. Yeah, you can book for an hour. Typical typical like matches, depending on you know how good of a quality of a match it is. Typically be 90 minutes. If we were to play, it would be a quality match. Of course. It would be two, only quality. Two quality gents here. Just prime athletic ability. Exactly. Just just killing it. So there's actually a few different things I wanted to show you. So one is um, I found like a mini version of Padel. And I sent okay. you that video. Did, did you get is a chance the, to see Is it? this the one, what's it called, Ping Pong Padel, that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it looks like fun. Yeah. It looks like something that you could set up like in this room. Like yeah. it's not, it was, like it's relatively tight, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, there, it's literally just... Uh, like a glass box around a uh, ping pong table. Yeah, I can yeah. do that. Yeah. There's a. Are you going to set one up in in your club? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I have like I have a very for for the club. I have a very specific like vision for it, which is okay. like it's the idea behind what we're doing with like United Sports Club is like focusing on a singular sport. 
Okay. Right now that focus is on Padel. Yeah. Um, and then combining that with like social wellness club modalities. So cryo, cold plunge, sauna, steam room, uh, red light therapy, EMF. Hot, all, cold, in between. Yes, all that stuff. They, and the idea behind it is like kind of like a modern age, you know, suburbia country club. We were talking um, with another guest about like it's different in like Russia and Eastern European countries how they do sauna. Like they get the the birch yes sticks and then they they hire an old guy that's been around the block that knows exactly how to do it and he pushes the heat from the top of the sauna down. Did you find like a an old guy on Craigslist to help you with the sauna? I'm a big believer in you know especially early on you got to wear all the hats. Oh yeah, for right? sure. So I am the old guy Guys, right now. These hats are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I had I, a wool I, hat with like moose horns. Oh, I actually have I have a great hat. I don't have my phone on me. I'll show you after. But uh, the hats say uh, I found these hats on I don't know some like Russian Alibaba sort of website <laughs> that said like they look like sailor hats and they say sweat captain on it. You were talking about business content, and I I definitely relate as far as I consume so much business content. Yeah. And there's also. And for how much I consume, there's not a lot of variety of business content. It seems like it's very much like, how did you build this? How did you do this? what you did, right? Yeah, can exactly. you break this down for me so that way people can like build a insurance company from scratch? Right. And that's incredibly hard to do. And so I was wondering, what type of business content do you think is lacking? Like, what do you think we're missing? I think, look, I think it depends on... The person I'm coming, I'm coming at it from the pers- from the perspective and from the experience of chasing my dreams already, being an entrepreneur. So I think yeah. that like the vehicle that like I'm or the uh, medium that I'm looking for and like the content I'm looking for, I think is probably very different from someone who hasn't made that jump yet. Yeah. Right. Um. And so I think that there's like really good motivational sort of content around that journey and the story. And I think it's important to tell those stories because it, it's really relatable. I think, you know, I just, you know, I, I look at like my story here, other people's entrepreneurial journeys and their stories. Um, and I know early on, you know, before I took that leap, like those stories motivated me to be like, I can do this as well. And then I think once you get past that point, past that stage, like for me, I'm more interested in kind of the the rest of that person's life. Yeah. Right. I think that makes sense. So I care less about, oh, how did you go about starting this business? Just because I kind of know the tropes of that, right? There, there, there are so many similarities between everyone's success or failure, everyone's entrepreneurial journey. There's like, like an 80% of it is very similar right? And the other 20% are the nuances and details related maybe to that industry or that business. And all those things are super helpful to understand. Right. I want to know like at two in the morning when you can't sleep and you're thinking about 500 things, what gets you um, to fall back asleep, right? Or how do you when you're for I, me I like cry I was, so hard that then I go back to sleep. Right, exactly. Yeah, I, let um, the, I let the tears warm <laughs> me up and comfort me. Uh or I'm like, okay, as you know, or for me, like something that's relatable for me is okay, I've uh I have a family, I have three kids, I started my first business uh not married with no kids. Right. Right. And so like my world is very different now, but the mode in which I need to operate in as an as an entrepreneur to be successful in any new endeavor, I only know one path towards that success, which is the path that I've experienced. And so, where can I be flexible in that path? And what, like, and what are you know new strategies or new processes that I need to implement in order to kind of have it all, so to speak? There was like a a theme for this podcast. I almost feel like it's like treating entrepreneurship like a cycle or like a life. A career, right? Because you talk about like entrepreneurship often in the framework of a company, like one company, beginning, middle, end, end being that you sell your business. But yeah. for a lot of entrepreneurs, they go on and start another business. If you think about like a three to eight year window where co- companies are started, grow, sold, sold, yes. right? Normally a career is what? 30, 40 years, right? Exactly. Maybe longer. So that's what like five, six companies. And then like, those are the ones that make it. And so the ones that don't make it, you're like, have successful or questionable exit, (laughs) maybe a good exit. And then like three or five different things, right? That either worked or don't work. And then like 
you people go different routes. And like, I would probably say 60% go on to start like a new business. I think your story is unique because you started these businesses that are in line with your stage of life. Like you sold the business yeah. and then you're like, I want to interact with my kids. I'm starting a business so that my kids can see this part of it. And I'm very passionate about paddle padel and I really want to do this and I want to see this vision kind of come to reality. So I think that's cool. I'm just doing something that's interesting to me right now. Yeah. Like beforehand. The... You don't find insurance like super, super interesting. N- not anymore. I, I, I've, <laughs> had a lot about, I've had a lot. I, I, although the truth is I, I did at that time. Right. And it was the opportunities that presented itself through like the platform of insurance. It's like this like blank slate to be able to be creative uh, from a like business execution standpoint and strategy perspective. I think were really interesting to me yeah. at that time. It's not anymore. And so because it's not, it's not what I'm going to you know pursue. I will say, though, you know, when I started that business, I think. I hear a lot of people talk about like different podcasts. They talk about, you know, you have to do it for the passion, right? And you can't do it for the money, right? Okay. Uh, you hear this all. I, at least I I read this here all the time. Like if you're if you're starting a business or you're uh, going on a path in your career because it's it's going to make you a lot of money. Yeah. It's not going to be successful, or you're or you're not going to enjoy doing that. Right. I vehemently disagree with that. I think that if that's the only reason, sure. Because that can get very old very quickly. Yeah. You need like other other kind of components of passion to like get you through the different hard points in that journey. It could be so many different things. It could be the team that you're like, oh, I like working with these people. Exactly. That's awesome. Or right? you find out that you like recruiting and that's inside the company. You're talking to cool people. Yeah, exactly. But I think I think that I, I look back at when I started Founder Shield and I knew we could make a lot of money doing it. So I was I, mean, I was yeah. I was very excited about that process. Money is I, okay, I didn't, guys. I didn't have any I didn't have any money. So I was like, oh, that would be cool to have some. That would be pretty uh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh and it's cool to have more as well. I'm gonna sound like such an asshole on this. Um, <laughs> Benji, I feel like so like some people saw your episode before, but probably like let's say like 70, 80 percent or like new subscribers or new people that haven't seen your content before or don't know who you are. So if we were to do like a trailer halfway in the show and maybe okay. we cut it, put it in the beginning so people are like, who is Benji? Why should I listen to him? What would you say your your trailer is? Are we, are we going to put in some like Mad Max, like Furiosa, like trailer music behind this? <laughs> Oh yeah, we're on. All right, it. okay, All right. good. We have a green screen. Oh, this is like a green screen behind me. We can we can do it with AI. All right, put me on a chariot. Give me one robot arm. Go. Why should you listen to me? Honestly, you probably if you're here already, you're going to continue to listen. So just strap on and uh, enjoy the ride. I think that you might want to be listening to me because I've had some successes from a business standpoint, and you might be interested in learning from those experiences. Uh, most importantly, though. You're probably here because this is your 10th podcast of the day uh, around entrepreneurship, and you're looking for something slightly different, and I'm a little unhinged, so I'm going to give you that. I'm going to give you the real answers, or at least my own perspective of what the real answers are, uh, because I've already had success, so now I can, you know, I feel like I'm uncancelable, and I can just shoot the shit and say it like it is. Hi there, this is Nate Houghton with the Made It Podcast. Wanted to let you know that this episode is supported by Rush Imhotep. Rush is a financial advisor with Northwestern Mutual. He's one of our preferred advisors that we like to connect people with, specializes in working uh, with individuals with non-traditional career paths like entrepreneurs. If you want to learn more or connect with Rush, you should go to wealthwithrush.com. The link is in the episode bio below. Check it out. Let us know what you think. Give us a, a high level of the uh, the company that you started. And also, didn't you say like Nips Blazing Interviews or Nip, something in the first uh, podcast? I think that might be one of the taglines for the show. It might have. I, I, like I told you, I, I it was very it was gr- unhinged like, it, in the right way. I cringely listened to part of it. And then I was like, after five minutes, I'm like... <laughs> I've I've heard myself speak enough. I'm good. You didn't call you didn't call uh, mistakenly call your your guest podcast the shit. So I mean, like you didn't yeah. have, you didn't do that. You know what? It's <laughs> it's fine. Like, honestly, that I'm percolating on a new idea for a podcast now. Jeez. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. I'm gonna crowd the mar- the podcast market with horrible podcast content. The company, yeah, the company and the exit really quick. Okay. Company we started was called Founder Shield uh, and Scale Underwriting. It's two companies, two for the price of one. The idea behind it was a tech-enabled, vertically integrated commercial insurance platform. 
We bootstrapped the whole way, started in 2012, sold in 2021 for nine figures. Now I'm on to some other cool shit. And he did, um, you worked with like Coinbase when they were getting their insurance product out. Yeah, and Coinbase, like, Robinhood. Um, insurance for startups. Insurance for startups, exactly. And um, now you're doing um, Padel. What's the name of the sports complex that you bought? Padel United Sports Club. Well, oh, oh, didn't that's you do another one for oh, yeah. Super Dome Sports. Super Dome Sports. So Super Dome Sports is kind of like my vehicle that I acquired because it was a healthy operating business with uh, with net cash flow uh net positive cash flow and the idea there was like let me see what thing how, how things run and operate there um and what i can learn from that as like a stepping stone into like this endeavor of um building my own company from scratch in this in this industry do you feel like it gave you the green light like you I think you I would learned have done enough it. And i think you... i would have i would have done it either way it gave me the uh the yellow light which is like, which is my version Proceed of the with green caution. Light. Which is like, <laughs> when I when I see the yellow light, I speed I speed up. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> yellow light, punch it. <laughs> yeah, I I think for me, like I think a green light, I kind of steer away from. Okay, because I'm like, oh, if this is so obvious to me, yeah, like I don't think of it as, I think like the the obvious ideas are ones that, a are, like, easily um like disruptable right and you know welcome a lot of potential um com competition okay um the yellow light stuff the stuff that is like people are like is that really a good idea i don't know like that's where i see the green light when people feel slightly uncomfortable yes then that's probably a sign a positive potentially a positive end. exactly like when i was getting feedback for the padel stuff like what if the sport doesn't take off right or what if people what if like suburbanites don't want this sort of like high-end social wellness um experience they don't they totally do that's uh, a that's I, a standard thing i live in i live there you're like i, want, I am the target yeah, market exactly <laughs> i am sparta <laughs> i am uh padel <laughs> um there's because this is a is our second time around i was thinking we could watch other people's content and like and react make fun of them to that content you can decide however you want to react okay. right like this is a blank slate let me see if I can pull I know up some I just stuff mentioned for us. that I was uncancelable, but I don't want to be like hated <laughs> by people. Yeah, we please go to the Padel uh, Club, guys. Please, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, we're not going to uh, do anything too extreme here. Let me see. Cool. I'm going to show you videos, and we are just going to react. Kentaro Yoshi Fuji, or Odi for short, and Odi, who kind of she looks like a badass. Loves to dress in all black, like he's a Sith Lord, is actually the furthest thing from one. You see, Odi here started and runs a cafe that's mostly run by these robots. But could you do this at your Padel Club? Um, I wouldn't. Like a robot ball boy or something. I, I uh, no. I hate this. You don't think that there should be robots in restaurants? No, I would go to a restaurant to talk to people. Are you intentionally nice to your computers or anything? No. Any AIs take over? Not at all. If they take over, they can... Look, it's kind of cute. robots. And even barista robots. They have different robots for different things. I... I absolutely... I'm sure they'll oh, crush it. There, there's something to this. Wait, hold on. ...control these avatars and work at dawn. So did you get that? They have uh, people that aren't able to, like, move or interact with people interact through the robots. Okay, that's that's a nice thing. Yeah. ...has one mission to eliminate loneliness from the human race. How is this going to eliminate loneliness? Well, that's the thing, is that the people that cannot move that are, like, possibly disabled or have, like, an issue with, like, mobility challenges are able to work inside okay. of restaurants or stores. Okay. So there's a little bit of, like, a, like a humanitarian... I'm, I'm pessimistic about about that about that angle. I think that's a nice tagline. It is a nice kind of like tagline. And fast forward to when Odi becomes an adult, one of his closest friends gets a terminal disease. Okay, so I guess he was also his villain arc. I guess he's also um, someone that went through this as far as being better. Right. Which those four years alone might explain his fashion choices, choices as well. I don't know, man. I like it. <laughs> it's kind of like the opposite of what you're wearing right now. Like this guy is like trench coat. He's like in the Matrix right now. Yeah. But I think what's cool about this is that it's service industry. You're combining like robotics. You're combining it with like interaction with uh, they can control it with your eyes. Right. So like the robot can move. I think this is great for the people who are disabled and unable to um, interact with other humans. But as a business, like movements and reactions. 
I think what's actually, I think the opposite is what's missing from like the world, right? Meaning like human interaction is like at an all time low right now. Right. Interpersonal human human uh, reaction. Yeah. And I think that there's, I'm sure people can like in the comments section can like, um, Don Cafe um, put put in a link to like the actual studies that show this. So I'll just, but I'll talk off the cuff on this stuff. Like there's, so there are definitely studies that have been done that show that like the the like neural activity that happens when you're in person with someone, right? And you're looking at them and talking to them, yeah. and like in a physical space is very different from a Zoom, right? Like take it for example, like our our interview here, right? Yeah. This is in person. The last one was over Zoom. Right, it's a very different feeling. Was your I feel brain like, like completely turned off during our Zoom interview? But now that you're here, you're like, um, you probably got maybe like seventy five percent of my brain. I got seventy five, Benji. Yeah, and I'm, now I'm, I'm getting hundred percent, uh, hundred twenty percent. No, I'll give you ninety five too. I want to go. I want to get invited for a third time. Right. All right. Then all right, I'll right. blow this thing. We're, up, we're building up to this. <laughs> um, no, but I think that you know, at, at least for you know, my new business, which is like in retail and it, and it's experiential like i think that there's something beautiful about creating like real human connection with other people right it's the same thing like with uh, padel like padel you play with three other people right okay yeah I, and you have to find those people to play with well that's Dude, and that's well, that's part of it and there's definitely a social aspect because you're right. confined to like a glass box and you can all hear each other and talk to each other and strategize and communicate and then you go hit the hit the sauna after or hit a cold plunge or something like that and you're yeah you, gra you grab a drink and you're talking on top of that like the, the point of the point of that is that i bet you like we can invest in three robotic Padel players, right? And now I could play by myself with three yeah. robots, and right? And then you, you lose that. Um, unless the robots have really good personalities and they develop over time and then they become like humans and then they become like... Yeah, if, maybe... if they're indistinguishable from from humans, then I... Then we need to think about their needs. Uh, yeah, I guess. And maybe so. their their robotic brains get lit up whenever they interact with you. I mean, this is a a perfect topic for uh for Rogan. Hell, he ro <laughs> the, the robots are taking over. Yes, um, exactly. So like w there's Neuralink, right? Right. So they're looking for another person to embed the chip, but yes. it is enabling people to interact in ways where they can't before. Like that person could not that's, be on that's the internet. Right. This person who's like bedridden cannot maybe hold down a job. Now he's like a robot. Well, so let me ask you then. Like, so here's the thing. So that's a good point to bring up because with the video we just watched, right? Neuralink solves that problem. Yes, especially if you're combining it with like prosthetics and stuff like right. that. Like, if you're actually so like, that's a that's a more so like that's, if you're like if okay. I'm an investor and I'm looking at like okay, this is like a this is like a, a stair step a stair step to Neuralink, right? Yeah. Um. But Neuralink could change the world, right? And could change people's lives, like, for their. I think that people who are better at home, like, this is just, like, a, a, little, a little taste of what they could, they could get, what the ultimate potential right. of the technology is. And I think Neuralink gets them as close to that, like, level to uh, as close to solving that loneliness that I'm 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 assuming so many people you know, in, in these unfortunate situations like find themselves. Well, want to see the next one? Let's see what we got. Yeah, All right. See. This um, guy makes 5 million a year by selling sex chocolates and we're going to expose his sex entire chocolates. social funnel. This is Oliver Bracado. I think this guy might be a DF with chocolate. us. Starting at the top really? of this funnel, I think so. he took after what I like to call the Andrew Tate model. Andrew Tate Andrew had Tate. a army of content editors taking his podcast clips, creating accounts. So I think what he did is Andrew Tate had like a Discord channel and he had a bunch of like college kids. Yeah. Like all like in Romania and like all over the place and he's like it's essentially like a mini pyramid scheme yeah where 100%. they would like all promote their like his academy or youtube thing did you watch the documentary on him i i didn't i i just uh i was one of those i was part of the academy
you were part of the academy <laughs> you got where you were i, I got from... where i am from him thank you thank, thank you, you andrew. andrew tate <laughs> i also learned he taught, me what, he taught me what it's like to be a real man oh jesus uh, <laughs> he was the biggest deal last year i don't know if he's in prison or not or what's happening uh, to him he's a chauvinist pig yeah uh, affiliate system for his course Oliver oh there's the affiliate system engine idea over to a wow, this guy has such great energy he looks a little bit stoned. He looks very tired. He's like, this is my 10th chocolate video this morning. I think he might need some of this sexual chocolate right now. His vibe is very sleepy. I wonder how many people will go back to buy more sex chocolate. Or if it's like a one-time thing. I mean, if it works, you're, you're bringing in, you're bringing in the, the, the truck. Back it up. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, no kidding. Nothing sells more than this. I, th I think this is like a, the this is the Gen Z version of horny goat weed. Dude, did we talk about horny goat together? Maybe. I Dude, horny goat was my I, bath bomb. I always I always talk about horny goat weed. So scale with his content system is because his product was already. You know that stuff is like half half like fake Adderall. I want to talk the horny goat weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it makes Adderall like, with the yeah, like extends and all. Isn't all Adderall those? like the mechanism as close to speed as it like kind of gets like as a similar? I mean, mechanism. it's a uh, it's I think it's dextroamphetamine is like so it's an amphetamine. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that adds up. Methamphetamine, dextroamphetamine, you know, uh, close uh, co close cousins. We got some cousins in the one, drug world. One just gets you a little bit more scabby. The um. <laughs> I, I completely lost my train of thought because he brought up horny goat and like I already talked about this on the podcast, but one of my business ideas is the sex bath bombs. Did I already pitch you on this? Maybe. Essentially, I, I it's like goat milk bath product where okay. you put it in a bathtub and then like you get in with your partner and it leads to romantic okay. uh, night out. My, my wife is an introvert like you. <laughs> yeah. Um, her bath time is for her. Yeah, let's light uh, some candles, put on some I'm Toto. A, I'm a like. This is why I'm building, you know, Padel United. I have the. So you can take. I have the bath there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, um, I, I honestly, a, I lose patience in a bath. I need to. I need to be like. I get bored after. Do you need to put like some some toys in there, like like rubber duckies or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, maybe I just need some goat milk or whatever uh, whatever <laughs> product you're, it makes you're pushing your skin very feel very nice you know and it kind of leads to things but anyways the idea of like sexy products right you yeah got sexy chocolate okay yeah sexy bath bombs you're selling this idea of like um it may lead to something it may not lead to something but there's some innuendo around it right, right? and they're like why are you getting me a sex chocolate ha 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 Right. Right. And so this guy has like a, a placebo, pyramid scheme. Like a placebo effect of, on chocolate. Yeah. You're like, is it working? No. But anyways, the um, this guy has a sex chocolate. He has a he has a pyramid of content creators. Right. Right. That are feeding to the main channel. I think it's called, like, called the parent child marketing okay. strategy. Right. And so I bring this up because one, I think he made he had a good exit for a sex chocolate, which is like awesome. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. Two, like the strategy for like the marketing that he did kind of makes sense. And like if you go to YouTube and you promote your videos, including with this podcast, yeah. right? You can give people creative license to use your videos however you want. And so it kind of opens up the door to other people using your videos. So if you do like Padel videos and you really want it to like feed into the main channel, yeah. You say like, hey, I'm gonna give you a copyright to this, but I want you to like spin up a bunch of Padel channels that feed into the main. That's true. We should de we definitely should be doing stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know, is it for me it's like it's it's less it's just it's less interesting to me personally. You're talking about the marketing side of it or the sex chocolate side of it? What excites me is the experience people have when they're at our facility. Yeah. Right? Um it's like I like I started this blog Padel Mecca, right? Okay the Substack, and my whole goal of that was I wanted week by week, week to week, bring people like into my own brain on like what I'm thinking about that week, what the journey is has been like, what the experience is like of, you know, going into brick and mortar into retail yeah and like um into this new sport and is it like, kind of like the build in public thing like you're yeah. taking them along the journey with you exactly i think i think that's part of it and like that's authentic to me right like it's exactly what i'm experiencing like in that moment and i i enjoy um creating i guess like that that type of content right i think uh, i think that resonates and i think i might have a video for you 
Let me see. But I, I, I do very much love this. If this is the new podcast idea for you, let's just like we're watching videos and 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 kind of ripping on them. This is well. I feel like we could do this in a sauna. We could this do this is, with beers. We could this do this is right up my alley. Let's 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 continue. Well, this resonates. One, they're like absolutely shredded. But we're about to learn about their their marketing strategy. Creator founders are the new marketing playbook for three. You're the creator founder. All these creator founders are with your Padel Mecca. Here's the three-step blueprint for being a creator founder and having a content strategy that leads to world building. So the first thing that all these creators are doing is documentation. Creators like Marcus Malone. Is this the same sleepy dude? Daily life of building he looks a little bit more awake though. Google Snacks has a day one series of what it's like to be two best friends building a pickle company. This documentation. I like a pickle company. Yeah, I love I'm pickles. on board. Have you been to the pickle guy in town? We'll talk about that. I've, I've pickled my own, own stuff before. It's very easy. That's homie. Someone like Nick Baird documents and provides value on the to be a hybrid athlete. Another creator I love is, is Jane. He documents his day but also educates you on the jewelry market. Nick yeah. Like, I like that they're sharing what they're doing. I like how they're like, this I, is my factory. See, like, I wouldn't, like, label this as, like, the creator economy. Why I not? Think they're, uh, maybe I just have, like, a, like, m like a mental block towards that or a negative association with that. But, like, I think that they're just within your niche. You need to interact with providing, like, a... Like they're breaking the fourth wall on on, on their life, right? Yeah. Like the daredevil, like or not. Uh, I I think of like creator is. content more so. Like their whole business is just the content they're creating, right? But that content is not leading to anything else. I right? like yes and no. Like I well, I think that's why it's like um like full time creators versus a creator founder or but the good and the bad is that you're seeing the inside of the business. But I don't like. Like the if there's an expectation that the founder is also going to be doing YouTube videos every day, well, like that's daunting. It's like right. that's a lot. <laughs> that that's that's def definitely a lot. I I'm trying to think of like um ones that I ones that I really like. I was I was actually just watching this uh just was just following this guy the other day uh this week. This guy is uh he's an ex um teacher, public school teacher. Okay, and now he's sailing across the pacific ocean that's awesome like, quit his job he bought a um like a 27 foot sailboat wait uh, is this a the my life in a catamaran kind of thing with and he has a dog or is this a different i if he does have a dog it's dead <laughs> oh shit hopefully it's a different guy <laughs> i think it's a different guy <laughs> um but uh, he's now he's on a it's supposed to be like a 40-day trip from like baja mexico to french Poly uh, polynesia um big trip yeah 40 days alone on a boat part of this whole thing is he's alone. like so i guess he's a i guess he, he has like four hundred thousand followers so i guess he's on instagram so i guess yeah, he they want to see if they make if he's they make a content it. creator but he's just creating his content is just documenting what he's doing right i find that more, i find that interesting what i what i what i find less interesting and more like just annoying is content of people talking about how to create a business right like like their their business is the content to teach other people how to create a business it's too meta for me it's it's there is a little although bit i guess meta. in that process they are creating a business i, I want to down the wormhole of like the matrix in that situation like there what things do i like and what things do i not like and is there a quality bar there because like if you're watching i remember when i was starting a business and i was watching the, like the y combinator how to start a yeah. startup series and i was like this is legitimate. Like yeah. this is like someone that's like talking about like how to set up a culture of a hundred plus person company and how it changes over time. Like spot on. But then there's other business content where I'm like, I don't think this guy started a business. I don't think he's right. And that's a big portion. I'm like, or he just does drop shipping and it, some of the stuff doesn't resonate. I don't, I don't like that stuff. So I have a rule of thumb as well where as soon as I've started a new business, uh -huh. I don't. I stop looking at any and all like content like that. General content, like, well, co like content to... related to like, like I, 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 I stop reading. Like, I'll read like biographies and stuff like that, just because I find them interesting. But yeah. I don't read like how-to books or like self-help type of books or. Um, and I read a lot of that stuff when I'm not like in business build mode. Yeah, you're like in a business purgatory or yes. intermission. I'm like, and I'm like, I'm not looking at other businesses. I am, I'm solely focused on like, okay, I've done enough research. 
I have ideas. If I have questions on things, I'm going to ask my network. I'll ask, you know, I might reference or look at a book that that might have an answer to that yeah. problem. But I think one of the problems with like the content creator economy is like there's there's so much content that like you almost become obsessed with consuming content about starting a business. <laughs> And then you never end up starting the fucking business. What is that that psychology thing where it's like if you talk about doing something, you get like the dopamine hit, yeah. and then you end up not doing it. And it's like inside my head, I built this business, and it was fantastic. Exactly. I watched all the videos. And then you have all the excuses of why you didn't all the time, uh, right? It's like you just like you got to just jump forward and like make make that you know that horny goat weed um, or bath product, bath product, and. And, and do it. Hey, podcast listeners. I made Operator Equity as a place for entrepreneurs to invest and buy in other entrepreneur-led businesses. If you guys are interested in uh, learning more and possibly buying a business, or if you're interested in possibly selling your business to other entrepreneurs that have sold their business in the past, please reach out to operatorequity.com. I'm really excited about this new project, and I think that entrepreneurs should be buying more businesses. So if this resonates with you, check it out. Bye. There's a trait that I like. It's called like quick start. I'm not sure if it's like a personality test term or, or what, but essentially quick start, your quick start is how, what is that barrier between like you hearing an idea, evaluating whether it's a good idea or not and just doing it, right? Yeah. And like if you're like an entrepreneur and you're like, you hear a good idea, making a podcast or whatever and you're like, yeah, I'll schedule like 10 interviews and I'll set it up and I'll learn, I'll figure it out. Like sometimes whenever I hear people pitch ideas or what they want to do, or I really want to be an entrepreneur, you can kind of tell like really quickly, you're like, oh, that's, uh, I'm going to check in and that's probably not going to be good. Yeah. Oh, it's very easy. When, if they're, if they're talking about something for too long and not doing it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big believer in, I talk about like my ideas right away. Yeah. Cause it puts me like, and I don't always execute on them. Like there are a lot of business ideas that I've said, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And then and I'm not doing it, whether like maybe I was scared, maybe I lost interest in that idea. Who knows? Um, but my entire network, everyone knew I was doing this Padel business well before I started the business. It like, was happening. I was, I was talking about it. I'm like, oh, okay, I got it. And then there was a stall because I couldn't find a location. But the second happened again, I was like, I'm, I'm in. I'm doing it. Yeah. I think that like – I think – we overthink a little bit too much. As a Peter Thiel says this, that like, if you've reached perfection, you're like, you're already too late, <laughs> right? Like the idea is that you have to go into any like entrepreneurial endeavor, understanding that like, it is going to be a fucking shit show. It's going to be messy. It it's is, going to suck. Yes. You're going to hire the wrong people. You're going to set up the wrong, in the wrong location, exactly. change your marketing. Yeah. You're gonna um, do like you might open up nine, a company yes. called Padel and it's called Paddle. You're like, <laughs> like, you I, mean, don't I was know. actually I was talking to my business partner yet literally yesterday about this, and we were like discussing our strategy for um like membership rollout, right? And that's the idea of doing like 30 founder members in which they get like a, a an engraved locker and figuring out like my my partner's like, okay, well, what what price point are we gonna do this at? And what sort of benefits are they gonna get? I was going through the list of like, okay, we can do this, we can okay add you know a free like uh, massage per quarter for them and they can have like a reserved um court the like, same court same time on a weekly basis for an hour and a half that they can always have like in perpetuity um and a few other things um swag boxes stuff like that and you know, i was like okay let's let's charge like a, a really high amount for this because we have to we have to value what we're bringing to the table for them and then deliver on that value and he's like okay but it has to be perfect and i told him i was like no it doesn't i was like i was like it's not going to be perfect it's going to, i'm like he's like well he's like well we can't back down from this price point i was like you can 100 back we're, down we'll from figure the price it out we're, we're i was like i've never i've never run a wellness club before so i've asked around i've asked around people what they've done yeah some pe some ideas are resonated with me other ones i'm like i don't know necessarily if this is gonna work i'm like but what i'm just gonna do is just gonna text 100 people that i know that live in the area we have a, a padel chat with like 200 people in it that are actively like playing on our courts right now while we're not open uh we're organizing matches for them oh, and i said fun thing yeah we're doing like we're building up the community like organically yeah um i view it like uh <laughs> going back to our uh, bring this all the way back to our uh, first topic, um, because so many people have not have not played um, Padel. 
like i think that like our strategy around like infiltrating um this community is like the uh sinaloa drug cartel strategy around oh snap <laughs> oh please you're gonna take over a country now uh i don't want no, I, I just want to take over fidel um i'm a simple man with simple dreams um, <laughs> no but yeah but like I, I really believe in the sport i believe that if yeah. you play it once you play it twice you're like oh i i get it I love oh yeah it. uh so you just got to bring people into that fold a little bit uh but with the membership thing right I don't know if our price point's gonna make sense. I don't Ballpark, know. Anyway. So, but where are you thinking? Where are you thinking for the, the um, for for our founder members? The founder members. It's, it's gonna be thirty memberships only. Yeah, and it's um, it's the same price per month, I'll but tell the you, initiation fee is five thousand dollars. Because I, I think you had me sold on the locker. I just like a little plaque. Just a founding nice. member. Nice. They'll have they'll have a bunch of oh. no, they have, like, they get their own racket. Um, that's like a high level, like four hundred fifty dollar racket. We'll give them uh, from one of our our racket sponsors, like Babylon yeah. or or Wilson or Adidas, and we'll have like a bunch of like shorts, shirts, gear for them that says like founding member on it. Did you reach out to the text group? How many and like say like hypothetically, if we were to offer this, who would be interested? And what did they say? No, I didn't do that. I'm just I I, I just started calling two hundred people one at a time. Did you? Did he call him? I'm sorry. How, I, 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 you, we literally we had this meeting yesterday, so I started yesterday. Okay. Yeah. And response good. Yeah. So far. Can we call? Right now. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. We'll give it a shot. Oh, we can always edit this out, but I think we're right. we're Sounds locked good. in. Who is this person that you're gonna call? Um, it can't be your wife. No, no. Wait. Also, I'm trying to find someone who like is like the likelihood of them saying no. Is 50 50 or, or it's higher? Or... It's like 70 30. Okay. I'll say no. So we can we can experience, hopefully, we experience some real failure here on this uh, chat. Let's see. Shalom. What's up, Bernie? What's up? Uh, I'm doing well. I hope, or is this, uh, I hopefully, hopefully, this vacation thing is going to happen. Um, well, I'm pushing it. Okay. I just gave out some dates. All right. Sounds good. She's looking it up. I'm gonna I'm gonna work on I gotta I gotta have a date of mine so I can I can work on my physique, get it peak ready for then. Um I think it's like at least with Alex, it's more personality than than physique. Clearly, you could see like what I look like. Um so just just work on your personality. <laughs> ah, that's an easy yeah, that's an easy just change my personality one hundred percent in a short period of time. That's easy. Um Okay, I had a question for you. Wanted to bring this up. I'm, you're my first, first call, Bernie, because I know how much you want to feel included and loved. Um, so I haven't brought this up into the uh, Padel chat yet, um, but we're now two weeks away from opening. We're starting to offer. Um, we have a thirty slot, thirty slots for founding members. Okay. Um, for the Padel Club, that it's basically our founding tier membership. It's our highest tier membership. Uh, you get all the benefits of like the. Uh, preferred members on top of that uh, you get a free racket you get a handful of free lessons to start as well as one free lesson per month for you and alex and you get a uh, engraved locker um in our locker room a massage per quarter uh, a bunch of a bunch of gear and so we have 30 slots available for this so obviously i thought of you as the og founding member uh for padel united very sweet um so yeah i mean send me like whatever like how like what are we talking about how much a million dollars a million all right i'm out <laughs> um all right you know what i just spoke to my boss he told me i can get it down to you it's the regular membership it's uh for a family membership i believe it's uh 400 bucks a month or, th or 395 and then the founding members and initiation fee of 5,000, one time only Wow, sounds amazing. Um, okay, so can I just let you know? Wait, um, yeah, I mean, um, uh, whatever, sign me up. But um, um, I just want to, um, I, I, I want to, I want to just think about. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Of course, I'm gonna do it. All right, I love you, and I thank you for the support. So, All right, I got, I got 29 mem other founding member slots now. I promised you, you were the first. Amazing. Awesome. I right, bud. Thank you very All much. Right. Thanks for the support. Right. Honestly, I can't, I can't wait for you to be the number one sexiest Padel player in the state of New Jersey. Yeah. I just like, I don't think I'm ever going to play, but dude, I just, you're going to, you're going to hit, you're going to hit the hot tub though. We're going to definitely hit the hot tub hard. Yes. Um, Love it.
Dude, yeah, I just, I just, I just need your name on a locker. That's all I need. I need to walk into my my new office every day, see that name, and like generate a smile. And be happy. Okay. Yeah. I can do that. All right. Love you, bud. I'll talk to you later. All right, man. Later. Bye. That's a good friend. <laughs> Who is this? Uh, it's a friend of mine named Bernie. <laughs> I mean, uh, like Bernie's going on vacation with you. I, Bernie's well, we, like, yes. you're good on vacation on the body, but maybe work on your personality. And yes to the Padel Club. I may not play, but I might not play the sport, but I will 100% be a founding member. Yes. Um, it's actually funny because I actually asked him, um, like asked really just like my close friends, hey, do you want to invest? Stuff like that. Um, and he, like it was it wasn't the right fit for him. Um, but... So I didn't think he was going to say yes, yeah, especially remember. especially because there is no way he's playing ever. <laughs> but he does but his, because his, he loves you that much. His, his, wi- his wife, his wife is going to play. Okay. Um, yeah. Alex is gonna, is definitely going to. I like how you brought it up like, hey, like your wife and you can do lessons like together. It can be like a you thing. Well, he's yeah. he's very codependent. <laughs> I think in every relationship, there's a little bit of codependency. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I, this friendship is going to be <laughs> over after this. I, I love Bernie. Bernie, Bernie you're man. on the podcast. Benji will reach out to you at some point, hopefully between now and the two months. No, are, I'm not even going to okay. tell him. I'm just All right. hope, I'm, for, hope for the best. Bernie, I'm going to tag you in this. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> that's awesome that you you got to sign up on the on the founding member. You got a founding member. There we go. I almost felt like to go. you... You had so many things. Like you had so many things that you were offering. Where I don't like even know. First... I'm gonna have to listen to that back because I don't. That was my first time I live pitched it. I haven't. I haven't called anyone to sell it. I, no joke. Time, I want to know. I want. I want the audience members to know here. Like we had the meeting yesterday with me, my partner John, and our my uh, CEO of my family office, Christina, and we were talking about okay what do we need to put together from like a like sales pamphlet standpoint on our site for these first 30 members mm. the visual of it what does it look, need to look like what are the like value adds what yeah. what are the benefits and today while i'm doing this christina's actually like working on this stuff so you should send her this i literally video. i li- i <laughs> I literally was like, okay, I will start making calls. Christina, Benji's putting in work. <laughs> yeah, I will start making calls like tomorrow once we get all the information. But honestly, I think it is, is an important lesson because I think that if you, um, see, I'm, I'm learning a lesson about myself now. I think it's like it's a scary thing when you're, even though you know, like, okay, this is gonna get done, but like you can always push it off of like, oh, wait till the content's perfect. Wait yeah. till this is like, you know what? Rip the bandaid off, do the call, see what happens. I mean, hell, with this podcast, you were one of the first people on it. Like, exactly. I, I reach out to people. I'm like, hey, this, there's this thing. It doesn't exist yet. <laughs> you look at, there's no website. There's no YouTube. There's nothing. I mean, you know, yeah. I'm I'm a narcissist. You tell me you're recording me for an hour, I'm in. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Sold. Um, so, Benji, what cracks me up about you is uh, I was like, first time I asked, I'm like, where should people go to find you? And you're like, do not find me. Like, do not look up the Schwitz. Do not look up, like, yeah. uh, <laughs> Pidel. Um, but... I actually think that people should check out Padel. I do think that they should check out like this new sport. And, yeah, they like, can, they shouldn't check out the Schwitz. It's, uh, it's my, for my my eyes only. Right, now. You'll, I'm, lear- I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning all <laughs> all the interesting s- secret sauce of uh, of humanity. These are I'm not Benji's sharing it with anyone. Private backyard sauna recording videos. Well, honestly, by the way, one of the recordings I had, the guy was like, we were getting deep about some stuff. He's like, dude, can you shut off the camera now? Uh, yeah, he was, he was, the guy was telling me some shit. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, no, nah, like, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to keep the recording, but I'm not going to share it. I promise. Yes. But that's like, it's kind of part of the problem with the, with the idea. Right. Because like people get really deep. Yeah. Right. Well, it's a very, it's a very yeah, intimate, intimate environment. Intimate yeah. Not only are we naked, yeah. but we're also talking about real shit. Right. Yeah. Cause I'm just like, fuck your business. Let's, let's hear, let, let's hear like the real depressing shit. Make our audience feel better by how shitty your life is. I think you uh, talked to, you talked to Andrew who produces this podcast. Yeah. You were talking to him about your idea and Andrew's like, people are going to be dropping. Like, I don't know how he's going to pull this off. I don't know. I, I love it. Figure it out. Andrew, you've doubted me. I'm coming for you. Um, oh, hey, fi- where to find me? Um, don't, but if you want to, uh, I would say the best place is Padel United Sports Club, Padel United SC.com, Padel United Sports Club.com. We own both domains um, on Instagram at Padel United SC. Um, you can look at my blog, which is Padel Mecca. It's on Substack. Don't, That's a wrap. That's a Don't plug. find me. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.
That wraps up today's episode. For more inspiring stories and valuable lessons from successful entrepreneurs, be sure to listen and subscribe wherever you get podcasts. Thanks for listening. Until next time, keep pushing boundaries and writing your next chapter.